That should give you a rough sense how a router discovers a route without seeing the entire network topology. Yeah, that is asking the neighbors to help. So neighbors will be reporting how they know about the destination. Now you know the neighbor's cost to the destination and you know the cost for you to reach each of your neighbor. So that, that be x and the cost from the neighbor to destination y. You can calculate the sum of x and y. If the value here is not infinity, you've discovered a route to the destination. But in order to discover the route that is the best to the destination, then you will need to check through all neighbors. Okay, for each neighbor, you find the cost to each of these neighbors. And you find out from that particular neighbor the cost to the destination. And you sum up okay, x and y for that particular neighbor. So you pick i such that xi plus yi is the lowest. There, you discover the best route, the shortest path. And I there is the next hub that leads to the shortest path to the destination. And you see right on the slide that what I was describing is exactly how distance vector algorithm works. So let me define the term here. dxy is the cost okay, of the shortest path to go from x to y. And so what we're calculating here is the minimum cost to go from x to y or to discover the shortest path from x to y. The way to do it is to go over all the v's. Okay, v's are the neighbors of the source. For each v, we calculate the cost to go from the source to the neighbor plus okay, the cost from the neighbor to the destination. So the sum here is the cost to go from the source to the destination through a particular neighbor v. So all we need to do is just to go over all the neighbors and calculate the sum for each neighbor and pick the neighbor that give us the minimum value. And that minimum value is the minimum cost okay, from x to y. And that v there is the next hop along the shortest path to the destination. So by doing this calculation here, we discover the shortest path. We discover the minimum cost. And this equation here is better known as the Bellman 4 equation because this algorithm implemented in distance vector routing is devised by these two great guys. Let's try to exercise the Bellman 4 equation using an example. And let's uh, calculate the shortest path from u to z. All right. The first thing to do is, hey, we need to have the neighbors right, reporting okay, how they know about the destination. So u's neighbor including v, w, and x. So v will need to report the distance from v to z. And that is the entry here. Uh, x will have to report the shortest distance from x to z. Same. For w to report the shortest distance, the shortest distance from w to z. And then we can begin okay, doing the calculation. So we'll be going through all three neighbors one by one. So let's take uh, the first neighbor v. Okay, so link cost from the source to v is 2. And dvz is 5. So we have 2 plus 5 here. From u to z through v, uh, the cost is 7. Second neighbor, x. So this is the second one. Link cost okay, from the source to x, 1. And dxz reported as 3. So this is 4 here. Wow, nice. Third neighbor, w. Link cost is and dwz3, so together 8. So obviously 4 is the minimum value, this is the minimum cost from u to z, and you know what? x is the neighbor that gives you the minimum cost, therefore x is the next hub leading to the shortest path. So here, 
x here, achieving the minimum is the next hop in the shortest path. And that is also, okay, the link pointing to x is the link interface to insert in the forwarding table for destination z. So that was the Bellman 4 equation, which captures nicely how one discovered the shortest path, the minimum cost to go from the source to the destination. But you see also in the previous example, right? Calculation of the Bellman 4 is actually based on these information. CIJ, okay, the link cost from the source to each of the neighbors. And these, the shortest distance from each of the neighbors to the final destination. All right. That is also saying the distance vector algorithm as a whole contains the Bellman 4 algorithm. But before the Bellman 4 can be calculated, yeah, each node will also need to collect these information. Now, this is actually configured in from the network admin when the network is established. Now, this actually relies on the neighbors okay, sending their routing information to the node. So next, what I'll be talking about is to go over the entire distance vector routing algorithm covering both the message passing part as well as the Bellman 4 part. Now, before I talk about the entire distance vector routing algorithm, let me introduce just one more notation. dxy is the shortest distance from x to y. This is not new. The new one is here. A null is going to maintain the shortest distance from itself to every possible destination existing in the network. So capital N here is the set of the nodes in the network. So we do have multiple values of these dxy, okay? because there are multiple values of these y's. So each of these value is the distance, the shortest distance to a destination in the network. Therefore, we call this a distance vector. It's denoted as capital D. Okay. Now, because this is a distance vector for no x, therefore it's called the dx. Good. So the distance vector routing algorithm, the goal is to derive dx okay, for each node x. Right? And before we could calculate dx, okay, the node here needs to have two pieces of information. Okay, according to the Bellman 4 equation, we need to know the link cost from the node to each of the neighbors. So CX fees. Now, in order to have the shortest distance from each of the neighbors to a particular destination, yes, we need to also know okay, the neighbor's distance vectors. So for each V, no X here also maintain DV. And now the algorithm of distance vector routing. You see here, a key idea is it works in two phases. First of all, each node send its own distance vector to the neighbors. So this is the message passing phase. And then two. Yeah, when the node receive the distance vectors from all the neighbors, yeah, Bellman for equation calculation begins. And as a result, Okay. the no x there discover its own distance vector and we could loop back okay. this node here then will pass the dx to the neighbors okay. that is the general idea of distance vector routing algorithm okay. the Bellman 4 equation now this is the Bellman 4 equation okay. know that when x receive all these dv's from the neighbors dx is not just one value to one particular destination. So this Bellman 4 equation is going to be called again these many times so that we derive the shortest distance to each of the possible destinations in the network n. All right. Yeah, final note here. Under minor natural condition, yeah, the shortest distance from x to y in the beginning, it might be really, really bad. But as time goes by, it's going to converge to the actual least cost. So 
minor natural conditions means that yeah, for normal internet operation, this is going to hold true. To be more precise, this is distance vector routing algorithm, and it's depicted such that it looks like it's working in cycles. So each router in the network it operates such a cycle. First, it's going to wait for one of these two events. Very common is that you receive a distance vector from the neighbor. Okay. Occasionally, this router here might detect there's a link cost change okay, among the, these links to the neighboring routers because these two events might affect the result of the Bellman 4 calculation. Yeah, so when these two events occur, yeah, we trigger Bellman 4 calculation to begin. Okay. As a result, we get a new distance vector. Now, if the distance to any of the destination has changed, that means ah, better route discovered, okay, shorter distance discovered, then we tell to the neighbors because the neighbors might also benefit okay, from the good news, benefit from the discovery. Right? So you see, distance vector routing algorithm working this way, it's iterative, meaning it works in cycles. In each cycle, okay, it can only be triggered by two kinds of events, link cost change and DV update messages arriving at the router. Okay. It's also distributed because one can calculate and discover a better route and pass it to another node. Okay, so each node notifies the neighbors of a better route and the neighbors then calculates even better route and notifies the neighbors. So, in the end, they converge to the shortest path, but the effort is actually shared, distributed, and contributed by all the routers in the network.